guys, and welcome to the Knitting Circle Live. And this is part of our Christmas in July events. My name is Mary Beth Temple. I'm from Hooked for Life Publishing, but I'm here today with you guys on behalf of the Knitting Circle. And we're going to knit this cute washcloth. Now, I did this in holiday colors since we were doing the Christmas in July event, but you could do this in any kind of colors you want. And it makes a great gift whether you're doing holiday colors or not. You could match it to the recipient's kitchen or bath. This makes a great washcloth as well as a dishcloth. You can go either way. My personal opinion is if it's a 12 inch cotton square, it can be used for whatever you want. So we're going to talk a little bit about using bobbins. We're going to talk about the seed stitch and the double moss stitch and the basket weave stitch. And because I have so much I want to show you today, I have made a smaller, I have set up a smaller one. So when you download your pattern, and I'm sure that somebody is about to give you a link, <laughs> um, it will tell you to cast on 31 stitches, but I have only cast on 21 because I want to get my rows finished so we can look at all the techniques we want to look at. And of course, if you have any questions, please, please, please ask them in the chat and I will hopefully see them and answer them. So the first thing I did is I cast on my stitches and it says knit, knit six rows for the garter stitch border. So that's what's going on here. So I have three ridges. Oh, I should have knit one more row. I see that I'm not even reading my own pattern. I'm gonna knit one more row while we're talking. Um, so if you didn't want to do this in multiple colors, you could also do it as a solid because I think the texture is interesting enough to make the washcloth or dishcloth stand on its own. And the reason I'm frantically knitting across is we're starting on a wrong side row and I was looking at a right side row. So let me catch up to that. Uh, the other thing you might want if you have one or uh, decide you want to use that is a bobbin and we'll talk about why later. And as for gauge, the tighter you knit these, the better it is. You don't wanna make it so it is not a joy to knit. You don't wanna be frustrated with it, that it's that tight. But the fact of the matter is when you're using cotton or even a couple of the brands have a, you know, like an 80 cotton, 20 poly kind of blend. The thing of it is when these get wet, they tend to stretch out a little bit. So particularly if you are a loose knitter, you really want to go down a needle size or two because you want a nice tight fabric so that when it stretches, when it gets wet, it doesn't become a lacy mess. So we're on row one, which is a wrong side row. It says with A, knit three. One, two, Three. Then it says uh, purl 25. In my case, it's 15. Remember, I took off. I took off uh, 10 stitches so I could get my rows done a little quicker. And then we're going to knit the last three. So one thing you'll notice in this pattern, no matter what else is going on, you're always going to knit the first three stitches and the last three stitches. And they're always going to be your A color. In my case, that's the dark green. So that is a thing that you need to remember as you're stitching along and that will help you not be so reliant on the pattern. So there's my last three stitches. I'm going to knit my last three, two, three. Now we have a right side row. It says with A, knit three. One, two, three. Then it says with C, knit one. So I'm gonna introduce one of my contrast colors. In my case, it's the white. Your case, it could be anything else. So let's talk about introducing a color. I don't like to tie lots of knots. So I tend to just pick up a fold of the yarn four to six inches in from the end. I'm gonna leave a nice long tail to weave in later, and I'm going to go ahead and knit one. Now there's an asterisk and it says purl one, 
knit one, repeat from asterisk across until three stitches remain with A knit three. So we're gonna go purl one, knit one. Now this first stitch, this is there's a gap here and it's kind of loosey goosey and we're not gonna get crazy about that because those are things that I can clean up when I go in and weave my tails in. So to begin with, if, you, if you're a, a newer knitter, this might look like knit one, purl one ribbing to you. It's that kind of a movement. You're gonna knit one and purl one, knit one and purl one. We're gonna keep going until there's three left. All right, there's three left. Now I want to do it in my A color, and I'm certainly not going to float my working yarn all the way across the back, right? So this is where I'm going to use my bobbin. So these are bobbins. I'll be honest, I bought these online somewhere. They were very inexpensive. They're plastic. I use these a lot because I like big ones, but you can get medium size or even smaller ones at any kind of craft uh, chain store. And I have, when I need more bobbins than I have, I've had made, I've made some out of cardboard. Um, I use this sort of uh, spool shape, put a slit in there to begin and end my yarn. And I made, I was doing a knit blanket one time that had 22 bobbins across the back. And I did not have 22 of my plastic bobbins. And so I made a bunch of these just to get me through. Now you could also use a butterfly bobbin if you're confident with that or you could make a little ball of yarn. This is not, uh, since you've only got the one bobbin, they're not so hard to deal with. So if you don't wanna use bobbin, you just wanna wind off a little ball of yarn at the beginning, that's okay too. So once again, we're gonna introduce our color by just leaving a four to six inch tail. We're gonna weave that in later. There's my knit three. So this is the end of row two. Again, I got some loosey-goosey stuff going on here, but I'm not going to get upset about it because I'm going to handle all that when I'm weaving my ends in. Now, let's take a look at row, uh, well, rows two through seven are all the same. So this is technically row three, but we're, we're repeating the same action. But let's talk about how we're going to handle these color changes. So we're going to knit three, one, two, three. So we're gonna change our colors here and forever. We call this intarsia style. So I'm always going to bring the new color under the old color. Now, can you do it around the other way around? Sure, if that's the way you learned, but do not go back and forth. You want to be internally consistent, by which I mean you do the same thing through your whole project. So we're going to bring our new color under our old color. And now we're going back to knit one. So I'm keeping all my color changes on the wrong side of the work. And we know that odd number rows are the wrong side, but I have to get my yarn back to the other side because I'm going to knit. We'll do this a million more times. So if you don't quite get it yet, that's okay. Knit one, purl one, and we're gonna do this all the way across. Now, we were talking about ribbing earlier. When you work in knit one, purl one ribbing, you are consistently knitting the knits and purling the purls, right? So if it looks like a column of stitches with a little V at the bottom, that's the knit side. And you're going to knit those. And if you see a little bump, that's a purl bump and we're going to purl those. Now this is seed stitch. And it's the exact opposite. In this case, we're going to knit the purls and purl the knit. So once again, this type of pattern, if you get a little confused and you can't remember where you are and you're in this section, you just want to remember you're going to knit the knits or knit the purls and purl the knits. Now, I have another color change coming up. I finished with a knit stitch, so I have to bring my yarn to the wrong side and I'm bringing my old 
color or my new color under the old color. I'm doing new under old. I have to take that back to the other side. Let's see how close we can get here. You see that little twisty right there? That's what's happening, but it's all going to be on the wrong side of the work. And knit three, two, three. Let's look at that again. So you see my twists are beginning and they're on the wrong side of the work. Now what happens when I have a right side row? So we're on row four, which is a repeat of row two. I'm going to knit three. And then my yarn's already on the wrong side of the work. So I'm bringing my new under my old. Don't get caught up in that tail. You're bringing your new yarn under your old yarn. And give it a little tug. You don't want it to be aggressively tight, but you want to make sure it's not loosey goosey either. Doing knit one, purl one, I'm knitting the purls and purling the knits. Did I do it? Look at what I did. Every time I'm on one of these lives with you guys, I wind up knitting with the tail <laughs> instead of the yarn. I just told you not to do it. So this is one of those do as I say, not as I do issues. Here's my working yarn. It is under, new, under, old. Now let's try that again. <laughs> Never fails. So we're going to do our knit one, purl one all the way across. If you have any questions, don't forget to put them in the chat. And it's okay if you don't, this is, this is a pretty chill day. These are just some basic stitches, some texture stitches to add to your little ball of tricks, your bag of tricks, if you don't already know how to do them. I'm coming up to the end now again, I could be counting, but I'm not because I can see when my C color is over, then it's time to move on. So now once again, I'm taking my new color. Let me make sure that I have the uh, working yarn this time. I'm bringing it under my old color. Knit three, tighten it up a little bit. You don't want it aggressive. Just want it a little tight. So once again, you have this gap in the corner because those, those tails are not woven in yet, but you can see the, uh, you can see the fabric is joining it to itself, which is what we want. Now I'm going to go ahead and knit another wrong side row. Let me see, I'm trying to decide if I want to do it now. So that's the general idea of the um, two through seven. I'm reading my own pattern here. I'm going to knit another wrong side row because our next, um, our next color, our next pattern change happens on a right side row. That is correct. So I'm going to just knit one more row in pattern. And again, yours will be a little bit bigger. So we're on that wrong side row. We have to bring the yarn here to do our cross and then bring our yarn back to knit that first stitch. And we're going to give it a little tug. So I'm not going to keep going with this pattern. I feel like you have the general hang of it. I'm going to move on to the next pattern. Once I get to the end of this row. So I have completed, this is um, two, three, four, five. This is four rows of this pattern. You will have done six, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. But in the interest of moving on, <laughs> I'm cheating a little bit. Once again, I have a color change on the wrong side of the work, which is currently facing me. So I'm bringing that yarn to me. New under old. 
taking it to the back so I can knit, knit three. One, two, three. Now I'm gonna take this off camera for a second and untangle my yarns, which is what happens when you do color work. Sometimes they get a little twisted up. The easiest way to handle that is to uh, untwist your bobbin from where it goes in and out with the other colors. Once you get that bobbin untangled, the rest of them will behave themselves. All right, and then the other thing I wanted to show you, so here's my sample that I knit last week. Let's take a look at the other side. So the reason we're so careful about this new under old is you can see these color changes going right up the side. You see how neat that looks? Even though this is the wrong side of the work and it's not quite as attractive as the other side, there's nothing bad or ugly going on here. There's no giant floats. And the reason that is so consistent is because we did that new under old consistently. Now we're moving back to a section in just the A color. So it's okay right now for me to cut my C color off. Again, leaving a big long tail. I can weave that in later, but there's no reason to mess with more than one color at this point. So if you're following along with the pattern, just to check it out and see what's going on, I'm on row eight. So with A, it says, Knit three, one, two, three. Now there's no new under old here because I'm tracking that color all the way across till I get to the very end, which we will also discuss. We did knit three, now it's knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. I'm going to do this across until four stitches remain, and then we're going to knit four, two. So what we're doing here is we are setting up the next stitch, which is that double moss stitch, M-O-S-S. Now you'll end with a purl two again, because I took so many stitches out, I'm, uh, I'm having to fit uh, fudge a little bit with the pattern. So I have four stitches remaining and it says knit four. Now, one thing I wanna talk about is this bobbin. Because I'm using my A color, I could knit all the way across the row for the next however many rows that I'm using the A. But if I do that, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to cut that bobbin and then when I get up here, I'm gonna to have to reattach it. So that gives me an end here and an end here that I frankly do not wanna deal with. And it will also happen here and here. So what I like to do is keep using the bobbin, even though I'm not changing colors necessarily, I like to keep the bobbin for that remaining three stitches consistently because that leaves me with fewer ends to weave in and no floats. And we don't want floats, especially in a washcloth or a dishcloth. You don't want it to catch on your nail or on a fork or what have you. So I'm at my last four stitches. I'm going to knit that one and I'm going to go ahead and use that bobbin. New under old, even though it's the same color, we are looking for consistency. Knit two, three. So that was row eight. For row nine. Now, again, with my uh, having changed the pattern a little bit, I want to make sure that this works for me. So I'm going to knit three at the beginning because I always knit three at the beginning and the end. Two, three. And then in my case, I'm going to purl one. 
and then purl to knit two all the way across. And look at that, I forgot to change the bobbin. So I've knit three, changed from the bobbin to the regular working yarn, which also solved my why is that stitch so loose problem. So for this row, I'm purling the purls and knitting the knits. And again, it looks slightly different than your pattern because I have a different amount of stitches cast on. So I did my I did my uh, bobbin change on that side. I don't have to do it on this side. On this side, I can row. Uh, I can knit all the way across to the end. Okay, no color change on this side. I'm going to knit the last three. So for row 10, we're going to purl the knits and knit the purls. So down here, when we had our seed stitch, each section, if you will, was one stitch tall, one stitch wide. When you get to double moss, each section is two stitches tall, two stitches wide. So I've done two rows where the knits and purls are in the same place. And now I'm doing one row where it staggers. So I'm purling my knits and knitting my purls. Now for the next row, I'm going to knit the knits and purl the purls. So I'm changing where these stitches are set up every other row. And I'm going to go ahead and do that as many times as the pattern tells me. Remembering again, When I get to my last three, I'm gonna to switch to that bobbin, which is down here. New under old, we're being consistent. So let's take a look. So there was our border, there was our seed stitch, here is our double moss stitch. And then uh, let's see, on a right side row, we're gonna change pattern again. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit the wrong side row. And again, this is a great time if you have any questions. Now is a really good time to ask. You're being very quiet today, which is fine, <laughs> but I'm here if you need me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and knit this wrong side row. And this is the wrong side row, so I'm gonna knit the knits and purl the pearls. And I've got my little change right here. And then I'm gonna take this working yarn all the way across to the end. So for our next section, we're gonna introduce our third color. Now, originally, I like the multi, I think they're fun. Uh, a lot of people don't care for them. And originally I was going to do this in red, white, and green, uh, but it looked like a flag. <laughs> so that's why I went with the multicolor in the middle instead of another solid. So this is also a great use. I don't know about you guys. I knit a ton of washcloths and dishcloths. I use them like if people have me over, if I'm staying overnight, I'll do a couple cloths and package it up with some fancy soap for a gift. You know, I use these a lot and I use them in my kitchen. Um, so this is also, if you wanted to, this is a great use of scraps. If you have uh, scraps of cotton left over from other washcloths that you've made, you could do each little section in a different color if you wanted to. You would just need to make sure that you had enough 
of whatever you used for your border. You would want to make that probably something that you had at least half a skein of, but you could use scraps for these little sections. And I know we like to use our scraps up, don't we? So the last stitch I want to show you, and again, apologies, I'm caught on my camera mount here. It's never easy, y'all, <laughs> uh, is the basket weave. And with this tiny little sample that I'm doing, we're not going to have a lot going on. But let's talk about, where'd it go? Let's talk about it. So the first section was one by one, right? Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. The second section was two by two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. The basket weave section is five, knit five, purl five, knit five, purl five, etc. The uh, slight difference will be in the number of rows in each pattern. A lot of people don't realize that knit stitches are not exactly square. So oftentimes you will find that uh, even if something is five stitches wide, it may not be five rows tall. It might be six or seven, uh, just because that's how, that's how knitting works. That's how those stitches uh, work out mathematically. So let me just grab my multi here. If you're following along, we are on row 14. So with A, knit three. One, two, Three. And now we're going to introduce our new color. And once again, I didn't put this on a bobbin. I'm just using it right off the skein of yarn because I don't have a whole lot of, uh, I don't have to change it a whole bunch of times. So once again, I'm going to just pull up a fold four to six inches in from the end. And so now I'm going to, now, new under old, yes, except it doesn't really matter because the tail's hanging. So I'm doing new under old, but it's not going to make a big difference. I am going to have a gap at that stitch because I'm introducing a new color. So with B, we're going to knit five, two, three, four, five, purl five, one, two, three, four, five, then knit five. And you'll do this a couple of times because again, you have 10 more stitches in your washcloth than I do in my little sample. See, one, two, three, four, five. There's my three at the end. I'm going to bring my new color, which is on the bobbin under my old. And knit those last three. One, two, three. Now for the wrong side row, I'm going to knit the knits and purl the pearls. Here's what we have going on so far. And you notice because we, um, because we used the bobbin for the last three stitches, even on the solid green rows, that bobbin was sitting there waiting for me. I did not have to add a new one. So I'm bringing yarn to the back, new under old, curling five. And then knit five. Again, you'll have to do this an extra time. You'll have to do that repeat one more time. Knit 
And then again, this stitch is loose because it's a tail and it hasn't been woven in yet. But now that my yarn is secure right there, I'm doing my new under old. Bringing it around to the back between the needles. So make sure you don't make some accidental yarn overs in there too. Make sure you're getting that yarn between the needles, not over a needle, because you don't want to add stitches where they don't belong. All right, so here we have our basket weave setting up. I'm going to do two more rows of that while we're hanging out. Again, if you have any questions, now is a great time to ask. Knit three. We're continuing to knit, but we have to switch colors. And now we're working in fives, not ones, not twos, but fives. Here we go, two, three, four, five. There's my color change, one, two, three. So that was rows 14, 15, and 16. And if you're following along with the pattern, it says keep repeating those rows, 14 and 15, and then row 14 once more. Then when you go to row 21, which is a wrong side row, it's telling you to repeat rows 14 and 15 three times. So here's the thing. It, when you're reading along with this pattern, you're going to say, oh, wait, I just did row 14. Why am I doing row 14 again? And the reason is after a certain number of rows, however many rows it tells you in the pattern, I think it's six, but I'm not counting because I'm knitting. After you've got as many rows of that first section of the basket weave pattern as the pattern tells you, you're going to switch the orientation. You're going to put the knits on top of the pearls and the pearls on top of the knits just for that one row. Two, three, four, five again your piece will be so much taller at this point than mine is because i just have this little bitty sample going on so you can see where it says end with a row 14 and then the next section you begin with a row 14 it's because i'm changing the orientation of the stitch pattern Then we're going to put our second color on. So once I've done that one row with the change in it, I'm going back to knitting the knits and purling the pearls. For the number of times that the pattern will tell you. Bringing my new under my old. I have to bring it around to the front because this is a pearl section. That was five. Knit five. Three, four, five, purl five, one, two, three, four, five, and then once again, new under old, knit three.
All right, let's go back to our finished sample because I think it's easier to see. So we had our border. We had our seed stitch section. We had our double moss stitch section. We had our basket weave section, which is what we just did. That's where we changed putting the uh, reversing, which side has the pearls on the front, which side has the knits on the front. That gives us our basket weave. For the rest of this washcloth, it's stuff you already know how to do. We're gonna repeat that double moss stitch section in the A one more time, remembering to use that bobbin for those last three stitches, even though you don't need to for the color, you wanna do it for consistency's sake. Then you're going to do your seat stitch section again, and then following along with the patterns, put that second border in, bind off knitwise. And when you weave in your ends, it's gonna tighten up all those little corners and make sure there's no gaps. But notice, there's no gaps between where the border stitches are and where my color changes. And that's because I'm doing that new under old consistently. And I'm giving that when I knit that first or purl that first stitch, I'm giving it a little tug to make sure it doesn't ladder. If you knit too loosely, you can get ladders where that color change is. So that's all there is to this whole washcloth. You now know all the stitch patterns that you need to know. So one last chance, y'all. Do we have any questions? I'm gonna give you one minute. These don't take very long to make either. Um, again, I kind of knit them all year. I keep a stash of them for the holidays. And frankly, even not the holidays, if in the summer, if somebody invites me over and I'm staying at their beach house or what have you, I'll bring pretty soap and some pretty washcloths. The thing with washcloths, even if people don't like to use them for washcloths, they can use them for dishcloths. And once they're ready, you know, they can chuck them without any kind of guilt. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it fitting. You don't have to worry about it being anybody's personal taste. Nobody will say no to extra dish rags. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Uh, once again, I am Mary Beth Temple from Hooked for Life here on behalf of the Knitting Circle for our Christmas in July event. I thank you so much for joining me and wish you a wonderful rest of your day.